This video goes with section 131 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course, and it covers some concepts in comparison. It's actually the first of two videos that I'll do on comparison because Hansen and Quinn revisits the concept in sections 141 and 142. But this section you'll find on pages 492 and to 497 in Hansen and Quinn. So as you can see, there's quite a lot to cover. So with comparison, we need to learn first how to make words that compare. So we're going to learn a little bit of new jargon. The positive degree is what you've learned so far with adjectives. So for instance, wise. But we also in English and in Greek have a way of saying somebody is more wise and that's called the comparative degree where something is more than somebody else or something else or in Greek especially where something has rather a lot of whatever that quality is. In English the most regular way to indicate that with an adjective is to use the suffix er so we have wise in the positive degree and wiser in the comparative degree. And there's also the superlative degree. If you want to say that something has the very most of some quality or ha is the highest in that aspect compared with other people or other things. In English, we have a regular suffix est to indicate that. So wise is the positive degree, wiser is the comparative degree, and wisest is the superlative degree. But you know if you're an English speaker that not all adjectives work this way. And so when you learn the positive degree of good, you also learn that the comparative degree is better, which can't be developed from the positive degree at all, and that the superlative degree is best. And you also learn that there are ways that we can do this without changing the adjective at all. So there's the positive degree, beautiful, but in the comparative degree, we don't use ER at all. We say more beautiful. And in the superlative degree, we also use an adverb and we say most beautiful. And one of the tricky things about speaking English and learning English, I would imagine, is knowing which way a particular adjective does comparison. In Greek, we'll have to learn some of those distinctions as well. So we have to learn the words, how to do them, what the suffixes are, how to do it regularly, what the options are with each adjective. But we'll also have to learn the constructions. Sophocles is wiser than Aristophanes has a certain way of saying that in Greek. The same with Euripides is the wisest of them all by far. And another example happens in Sappho, a poet as wise as possible wrote beautifully. So in this rather long video, we're going to learn how to do regular comparison with adjectives. And in fact, Greek has two ways to do that. So we'll learn to form those words. And we'll also learn the way to do the adverb way, which is a third way to do comparison Adjectives that have irregular formation of their comparative and superlative degrees will be part of what we talk about in part two, the video on comparison for sections 141 and 142. So we'll wait on those. But this video will also cover the, con the basic constructions of comparison when something is wiser than something else, and Greek has two ways to do that. And this video will also do the is the wisest and of them all and how to say by far and we'll also learn in this video how to say something is as wise or whatever the adjective is as possible so let's get started first the words so I'll be talking about the positive degree of adjectives that you know and then we'll see how to make the comparative degree which again can mean more than something else, actual comparison, or it can be telling you that whatever you're describing has a lot of that quality, is rather whatever that positive degree is. And we'll be looking at the superlative degree, 
where it's the most compared to somebody else or that it has a whole lot, very much, of whatever the quality is. So you've learned adjectives in the first and second declension, os e on, like sophos, sophé, sophon. When we have one of those adjectives, we'll drop the omega sigma from the masculine nominative singular. And if what remains is a stem that ends in a short syllable, that is with a short vowel and only one consonant or no consonants at the end of it, we'll add omega. If it's a long stem, that is a stem that ends with a syllable with a long vowel or with a diphthong, or even with a short vowel, if it also has two consonants at the end of it, we'll add an omicron. And then to that, so a stem of our positive degree with either an omega or an omicron according to those rules, we will add for the comparative degree, teros, terra, teron as our suffix. And for the superlative degree, we'll add tatos, tate, taton as our suffix. So you see both of these are also first and second declension adjectives. So you know how to decline them because you know how to do os a on adjectives or os a on adjectives. So let me give you some examples. Here we have in the positive degree sophos, sophé, sophon, wise. We'll take the os off of the masculine nominative singular and get sof, which has a short vowel and only one consonant, and so we will add to that an omega. And for the comparative degree, then, we will add teros in the masculine, sophoteros, wiser. And then we'll go on with the feminine, sophotera, and the neuter, sophoteron. In the superlative degree, we'll have that same stem and tatos, tate, taton. So, sophotatos, sophotate, sophotaton. Another example is delos, dele, delon. Remember that means clear. So, delos, and we'll take off the os in the masculine nominative singular, and what we have left has a long syllable at the end of that stem because of that eta. And so we will add an omicron and then the suffix teros, terra, teron. And what we get is de la teros, de la terra, de la teron for clearer. In the superlative to that same stem, we'll add the superlative endings. So de la tatos, de la tate, de la taton, for clearest or very clear. So that's the regular way to do this. Now there are going to be some variations on this one, which I'm going to go through in a minute. But I think these are pretty recognizable, especially in the comparative degree, because we have ER as our comparative degree, as in wiser or clearer, We've got that epsilon rho in the comparative degree of teros, terra, teron. So I find these pretty easy to recognize, especially in the comparative degree. Now, there are some adjectives that don't quite follow that omega omicron rule, and you just have to learn them as variations. So we'll get mesos, and here I'm only going to give you the masculine nominative singular because it will tell you enough to, to decline the rest. There, instead of an omega, we have alpha iota. So mesiteros is the comparative degree, and mesitatos is the superlative degree. So the, all the nominatives would be mesitatos, mesitate, mesitaton for middle. And then palaios works similarly Although all you have to do is take off the omega sigma and it's already got that alpha iota and you get palaiteros and palaitatos. And the other adjective that uses the alpha iota is philos. So onto the stem phil, you'll add the alpha iota and then the suffixes. 
So philiteros, philitera, philiteron, for dearer. And philitatos, philitate, philitaton, for dearest. Although you should recognize that there's a very, even yet another variation here. And you'll see it, the alpha iota syllable completely gone. And you'll often see philtatos, philtate, philtaton, for the superlative of philos. So we've talked about how to add those suffixes, teros, terra, teron, and tatos, tate, taton, to first and second declension adjectives. But we're going to need to see how they get added to other sorts of adjectives. So with adjectives that end in ace, s, or some of the ones that are us, ea, u, we're going to take just the stem and add these now, I hope, familiar suffixes. And we'll get words like this. Amathes, so you learn the nominatives of this as amathes, amathes. We'll take the stem of that adjective, amathes, and simply add the comparative suffix to it, amathesteros. And the same will happen in the superlative, amathestatos. So ignorant, more ignorant, and most ignorant. With safes, clear, we'll do the same thing. Safes is the stem plus the suffix teros, safes teros, clearer, safes tatos, clearest. Barus, barus barea baru is how you learned it. So the stem is baru. We'll add the teros suffix, baru teros and barutatos for heaviest. You also know third declension adjectives in own, on. And for those, we'll take the stem and add s, and then the suffix teros or the suffix tatos. So that gives us afron, foolish. Afron is the stem there. And then we'll add the s and the comparative suffix, and we get afronesteros, more foolish, and afronestatos, most foolish. El daimon, happy or fortunate, does the same thing. El daimon is our stem, and we add s and the suffix teros. El daimonesteros, happier or luckier, and el daimonestatos, happiest, luckiest. So one of the regular ways to form comparison is with teros and tatos. Greek also has a second way. So for some other adjectives in the positive degree in us, ea, u, some adjectives in first and second declension that end with ros, ra, ron, that is, os, a, on adjectives that also have a rho, at the end of the stem, and various other random adjectives, we're going to get a different regular way of forming comparison. In the comparative degree, we'll add the suffix eon, eon, and in the superlative degree, we'll add the suffix istos, iste, iston. So you're going to need to learn which adjectives take this kind of comparison, but if an adjective takes eon or and eon in this comparative degree, it will take istos, iste, iston in the superlative degree. If it's teros in the comparative, it's tatos in the superlative. The two different varieties of regular comparison don't mix. So let's see how this goes. We'll take an adjective in the positive degree, isgros, iskra, iskron. And we will add the suffix eon, eon. So eiskion and eiskion. And then in the superlative, we'll add istos. Eiskistos, eiskiste, eiskiston. So you can see there, we took off not only the omicron sigma of the masculine nominative singular, but also the rho. But what's crucial, of course, is that you recognize that eiskion is a comparative of ice gross shameful, and ice kistos is the superlative of the same word. And I think you can see that even if you don't memorize how to form it. 
Let's look at some more examples. Ekthros is ekthion and ekthistos. So heidus, pleasant, becomes heidion, more pleasant, and heidistos, most pleasant. Kalos, interestingly, gets a second lambda and becomes kalion, more noble, more beautiful, better, and in the superlative is kalistos, two lambdas again with that same new suffix, so most beautiful. Here again, it's good to know how to form these, but I want to make sure that you see how to recognize them. For me, these kinds are easy in the superlative because as English has ST in our superlatives, best, so do these words have sigma tau in their superlative. So that helps me see these as the superlatives that they are. Now, eon, eon has a declension that you need to learn. Istos, iste, istan is a regular second and first declension adjective, but eon, eon has its own variety of the third declension for us to learn. So let's do that real quick. In the nominative, we get hedion for the masculine and feminine and hedion for the neuter. In the genitive, it's hedionos, hedionos, which is predictable. In the dative, hedioni. And then in the accusative, hediona, hedion. But for the accusative of the masculine and feminine, there's an alternative form, hedio. And this comes from an alternate stem and an intervocalic sigma that drops out and a contraction. Best just to learn it, hey Dio. In the vocative, then, we get hey Dion and hey Dion, simply the stem. When we move on to the plural, we get hey Dioness or hey Dios and hey Diona or hey Dio. So I think those ones are a little more tricky to see as nominatives, and you need to keep an eye out for those and really learn those forms, those alternate ones. The genitive plural, reliably own, he known. Here the damn dative plural is not the hardest thing of the declension of eon, eon um, comparison, so he diosi, and then the accusative plural, hey, dionas, if we're using the more regular endings, and that looks nice and accusative plural for the masculine and feminine, but the alternate ending looks just like the nominative. So you need to remember that that has both possibilities, as you're used to doing for the neuter, which of course has the same endings as the nominative, hey, diona, hey, dio, in your alternate form. And that gives us the vocatives, which in the plural, as always, are the same as the nominative. So spend a little time learning this variation of third declension adjectives that's specific to comparison. But right now, we have to go on and learn the third way of forming the words in comparison. And so here, we'll have any adjective in the positive degree you can make comparative with the adverb malon, just as you can do that with the adverb more in English. And you can make it superlative with the adverb malista, most, just the way we can do that with most in English. So, philos can be malon philos instead of philiteros, or malista philos instead of philaitatos or philtatos. Elgenes can be malon elgenes or malista elgenes. And even more than in English, you can use these forms with any adjective and it doesn't sound weird. So you could call something more good, but it sounds a little weird because we expect better. But malon kalos or malon agathos doesn't sound weird. It's just as regular as their um, suffix versions of comparison. 
Now we can learn how to use these words in constructions. So Greek has two basic ways of doing comparison, actual comparison, when you say that something is more something than something else. In English, we use the comparative degree, wiser, and now you know three ways to do the comparative degree with an adjective, and we use the conjunction then. Greek can do a similar thing where we'll use the comparative degree and the conjunction a and a word in the same case as whatever you're comparing. So in the sentence Sophocles is wiser than Aristophanes, Sophocles is wiser, that adjective is going to have to agree with Sophocles, and whatever case he's in is also going to be the case for Aristophanes when we use method number one for comparison, that is when we use a. So the Greek then becomes Sophocles, Sophoteros, Eston, Sophocles is wiser than a Aristophanes. And there we have Aristophanes in the nominative, just like Sophocles. Another example that shows you how this works not in the nominative, and nomizon ton hopliten sophoteron enai eton strategon. So here we've got some indirect statement. And what we get is, I used to think, and nomizon, that the hoplite ton hopliten was wiser, so photoron ani, than the general. So what we're comparing is the hoplite and the general. And because the hoplite is in the accusative, the general is going to be as well because we're using this first kind of comparison with the conjunction a. So so photoron ani, a ton strategon, there he is, that general, also in the accusative because he's being compared to the hoplite in the accusative. So that's one method of comparison. The other way is simply to put what you're comparing something to in the genitive case. No conjunction. And so we get for the same sentence, Sophocles is wiser than Aristophanes, we could simply say Sophocles, Sophoteros, Estin, Aristophanus. Done. In English, we have to keep the conjunction. We have to say then Aristophanes. But Greek merely has to put it in the genitive case. So Sophocles, Sophoteros, Estin, Aristophanus is the same in meaning as Sophocles, Sophoteros, Estin, A, Aristophanes. It's just the genitive that does the comparison there. And we can see that in uh, the genitive version of our other example too. And nomazon to hopliten, Sophoteron, Enai, tu strategu. So that is the same, I used to think that the hoplite was wiser than the general, but we didn't have to have the A, we simply put the general to strategu in the genitive. It's exactly the same sentence, just with a different way of comparing. That was how we do basic comparison, but we need to learn some constructions that help out with comparison. So if we want to say that Sophocles is wiser than Aristophanes, but we want to say how much he's wiser, then we're going to need to use the dative degree of difference. So if we want to say he's much wiser than Aristophanes, we'll do the same sentence, Sophocles, Sophoteros estin a Aristophanes. There I used the first method of comparison. And we'll put how much wiser he is in the dative case. So here it's much wiser, so we do polus pole polu in the dative, neuter dative singular, polo. Sophocles polo sophoteros estin a Aristophanes, and that's the same as saying Sophocles is wiser than Aristophanes by much. English says that both ways. Greek has this particular version with the dative. You can also do this with an adverbial accusative, and so we'll get the same meaning out of Sophocles polu sophoteros estin a Aristophanes. So be aware that you have both possibilities. You already knew the adverbial accusative. Dative degree of difference is a new variety of the dative that you should be aware of when you have comparison. Now we also need to learn how to say 
Somebody is as something as possible, a poet as wise as possible. So here we do the superlative and hos. Sappho poetes hos sophotate kalos egraphen. Or you can also use, instead of hos, you can use hoti. Poetes hoti sophotate kalos egraphen. So, um, oh, and by the way, egraphen there is in the imperfect because, of course, she wrote beautifully over a period of time, not just at one moment. So I chose the progressive repeated aspect in the past. But back to the construction, something is as something as possible. You can use hoti or hos, hos or hoti, and the superlative to say that. And of course, it doesn't just work with wise. You can do it with um, as shameful as possible, hos aiskiste, or as pleasant as possible, hos aidiste, or or as pleasant as possible, hoti heidiste, or um, hos heidiste, and it works with any superlative. Greek, as English, likes to make grand statements sometimes. So if you want to talk about the, the realm in which somebody is the most something, so another superlative construction, you're going to call them the superlative thing, the wisest, Euripides is the wisest, Euripide sophotatos, of them all, you're going to use a partitive genitive, which I think is pretty easy to see how this is part of the partitive genitive concept, tone pantone. And then if you want to say, by far, you again will use the dative degree of difference, macro. So Euripides is the wisest of them all, by far, Euripide sophotatos, tone pantone, esten, macro. I think that gives you all of the forms and all of the constructions you need to get started with comparison. So there's a lot to take in there. It's a very long video and a very long section in Hansen and Quinn. We'll come back to adverbs in comparison and truly irregular adjectives in comparison in sections 141 and 442, which I will call part two of our comparison videos.